Hello, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome back to Thoughts from the Roundtable. I'm Jacob. I'm Pierce. Today, in another episode of Chats, we're going to be talking about haunted houses. They're pretty cool. But before we get into um, the usual chats, what's the word I would use? Format? Yeah, I, I don't know if I'd call it a format. It's kind of... Chats isn't really our most intelligent podcast. Because all of ours are so intelligent. Well, I mean, you know, Chats is probably the least, which is saying a lot, to be honest. Um, but I think we should make a blanket statement before, because, I mean, addressing the elephant in the society, um, the whole George Floyd situation, um, we that's a, that's a tragedy, but that's about all the opinion you're going to get out of us. Yeah, it's really... Not our place. Not our place, but we thought we should mention. Also, on a on a less serious note, um, we're not releasing a normal podcast this week because we're tired. This week has been long, my friends. We've had a lot of trouble securing housing so we won't be homeless next year. And we were doing a lot of that tonight. And didn't have time to do a movie. Yeah. So yeah. you're going to get a little bit of an extra spicy, extra juicy chats. Yeah. Or at least we'll try. Probably fail. This was not a good intro. <laughs> <laughs> Shout out to whoever edits this. Yeah. So with that awful intro out of the way, please join us at the round table. All right. So full disclosure here. When Jacob asked me today what we should do for chats, I had, like, the fetus of an idea. You know, it's not really grown. It's kind of just chilling there. It's it's not a good idea, but, I mean, it's not a, not a horrible idea. I was watching an episode of one of my new all-time favorite shows because it's just so fun, Community. And they were at... they. They were in a haunted house, basically. I mean, that's not really what happened. They were at somebody's mansion, and the mansion was haunted, yada, yada, yada. But this isn't Thoughts from the Roundtable main podcast. This is chats. No movie talk here. <laughs> this is this is for other things. But I just, I saw it, and I said, ha, haunted houses, cool. I'm into that. So that was my idea for this chat. That's all I got. Yeah, I wanted to start out by saying I used to be scared of haunted houses. Really? Like, terrified. Really? Have you, like, so was there a reason why you were scared of them? I just used to be scared, like, all the time. My dad tells the story of all the time of the, the commercial for Monster House that we saw in the theater uh, while we were watching, or before we were watching X-Men. I think it might have been the third one. Don't know for sure. It just would have been around that time period, so that's what I'm going to go with. And I didn't watch commercials in movie theaters for, I think, a year. Oh, my god! I, like, would uh, not watch TV commercials for, like, a year. I was so scared of Monster House because they ate the police office car, officer car. <laughs> I was like, if the police can't protect us, who can from <laughs> the, animated, the animated house? I mean, I was legitimately terrified. I think that's where, like, I didn't really start watching scary movies until I was, like, in high school. Usually it's like, oh, I'm 13 now. <laughs> scary movies. Did not my thing. But then I, like, dove head first. And now I really like them. Pierce and I watch them together all the time. Yeah, I know, like, because this year was the first time I started watching horror movies because I'm a little pansy. But when you watch your first horror movie that you and you really enjoy it, it's all you want to watch. Yeah. It's like when I, I started listening to true crime podcasts, and then for like a week straight, I listened to like every one of Case Files podcasts because I was just like, wow. <laughs> it's dark. like it's like you're a drug addict. I feel like, okay, this is a hot take. Hot take incoming. Load the hot take cannon, as we say in the streets. Um, Yeah, so... <laughs> Hold on, let me gather my thoughts. I'm really tired right now, so I apologize. But the same feeling you get from watching a scary movie is like the feeling from a haunted house, and you're like kind of just chasing that like you're a drug addict. Yeah. So have you been to like haunted houses? One. Really? What, yeah. So what was your experience like there? I don't really remember. Uh, 
it was at a, at a fire station mm-hmm. in North Vernon. And it wasn't like anything scary, but I remember being like scared shitless about it. Because like, I don't know. I think it's like, I know it's fake, but like you still get scared. Well, yeah, because it's like, it feels so real. Cause we should I, go to Fear Fair this year. Let's do it. Um, We can podcast I'm gonna, about it on a chat. I'm going to piss my pants when we go. Dude, okay, so here, I went to my first haunted house thing. It was like a haunted trail, mm-hmm. which are vastly more scary mm-hmm. because you're just out in the middle of the woods. And um, so there was like a book. I don't remember a lot because I was really little. I was way too little to be at one of those <laughs> things. And I remember not fully getting it, and I went into, like, the evil circus portion of it, and there was, like, a clown, like, lanking by one of the doorways, and it's like, hello, in his creepy clown voice, and I didn't register that it was creepy as a kid, so I was just like, hi, <laughs> and um, I went over to it, and he was like, would you like to play a little game, and pulled out, like, a big knife, and I said, I don't like playing that kind of game, but we can play trucks. And I pulled out a truck out of my pocket. And the clown played trucks with me. And was trying to scare me so bad, but I just didn't get it. That's scarier that he played trucks with you. Yeah, it was so scary. Like, thinking back of it, that was so creepy. My mom was not thrilled with me. Yeah. So, I just uh, went to the Google machine. Looked up haunted houses in Indianapolis. Because that may or may not be near where we live. <laughs> uh so so there's like whoa these are kind of pricey I'm not gonna lie but i'm just looking at like haunted houses in indianapolis which yeah so we're looking at like not scary and then like scary and like this oh fear fair is on here oh it's it's so they have like like a compass and they put little dots so you know like the political compass I'm aware. I love, okay, a little side note here. I love political compass memes. If John's listening to this, he knows because I send him about two a day <laughs> because I think they are hilarious. Beside the point, um, it's got like that and it's got four sections faint of heart, five stars, best value, family. That's the scariest so not, one. Nice that's, that's the scariest one. Um, no, I think we need to go to Indie Scream Park. I don't like the sound of that one bit. Do you remember the Diary of a Wimpy Kid? Yes. Where? Yes. <laughs> I know exactly what you're talking about when they were in the basement and they made that haunted house and charged people money for it. Yeah. And it was just like a bunch of mattresses. Yeah. Fantastic. That's look. so funny because that's like something we would have done. I would have definitely done that with my friends. Oh, for sure. Because I would have thought it was cool. Okay, so they have five attractions, one location. Okay, we are going to this next year. <laughs> okay. We have... Does it only open, like, around Halloween time? I think so. Okay. I wouldn't swear to it, though. Don't quote me. We have Nightmare Factory Blackout. <laughs> Kilgore Circus 3D. That sounds like when, you know, you got those mobile games ads that's like, Shoot, murder, assassin, four. <laughs> What's this trying to hit those keywords? Yeah. Uh, Zombie Land Unchained. Now, I think I looked into this last year. That's the one where they like, you're like, not in a haunted house. It's like a big area, and it's basically zombies. So, sidebar again. Is this the VR thing about zombies? No. What? Okay, go ahead. And then I have <laughs> okay. to tell you this. So, um... I went to a renaissance fair um, with one of my friends, Nathaniel, and his roommate who plays the piano. That's that's all I remember. Sorry if that roommate's listening. I know you do more. but Is his name Jacob? Maybe Drew. Derek. I don't know. I feel like it because I think Nathaniel. No, it was Jacob. Because he Nathaniel said, said Jacob. I'm getting replaced. <laughs> oh, yeah. He plays the piano like a madman or so I've heard. This is so off topic. Of what I was going to say. So at the Renaissance Fair, they do a thing where they also have like a zombie Renaissance Fair. So it's like the Renaissance Fair, but being attacked by zombies. And you, you're there. I kind of like that. It's a cool idea. I dig it. I don't hate it. 
I mean, I thought I when I saw the poster, I was like, you know, I'd go to that kind of. Renaissance fairs are cool. They're cooler than I thought they'd be. Like, you definitely have those like stereotypical like Renaissance, Renaissance fair moments mm -hmm. where it's like the people who really want to dress up and should not be dressing up. Yeah. But you also have like jousting, and that's kind of cool. You're a big medi medieval guy, so I see how you'd really go. Yeah. There's something about two fully grown humans <laughs> on horses beating each other up with clubs at high speeds that just kind of tickles my fancy, you know what I mean? <laughs> like, I'm a big, like, I mean, if you listen to our Indiana Jones podcast, I'm a big buff guy fan. That sounds pretty homosexual. <laughs> but, <laughs> listen, listen, I just like, like, big men, you know? Like, big men hitting each other, you know? <laughs> Do you understand what I'm saying? No. No? So like, I think you're digging yourself a hole you might not be able to get out of. Just a lot of large men. Nope, nope. Hey, just lose this <laughs> point. I'm just saying I like jousting, okay? Yep, ended at that. That's it. Ended at that. Have you been to a renaissance fair? No. Swords are overpriced, dude. I wanted to buy a sword. It was not a big sword. What was it? Like a dagger, maybe? It's like four hundred dollars. I bought my Lord of the Rings sword, which you guys will get a cool glimpse of when we do our Lord of the Rings podcast. Um, but I got it, and it was like half that. It was way bigger. I'd pay two hundred dollars for a sword, for especially like a replica sword. Sure, that's dope. Right. So my zombie point. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, I got way off track. No, there. my zombie point. Um. So there's this thing I heard on a podcast, and it's like VR, right? And you get in these big, like, warehouses, and you put on the VR goggles, and it's like a zombie attack, and you have these, like, laser guns, and it recognizes when you shoot, and you, like, run. It is freaking where insane. Where? The nearest one's, like, California. Damn it. I know. I looked into it, and I was like, Emma, let's go. That is so fun. The uh, the that void. You, it's called the void. Here I mean, it is. Th there's one of those that's Star Wars. Oh my God! There's one in Indiana. No, there's not. In Mishawaka. With how far? Mishawaka's not that far. We can go to Mishawaka. Okay, I'm literally gonna look into prices on this. Okay, maybe we should do that off podcast though. Yeah, but like, okay, I'm just gonna. Uh, actually, I shouldn't say how far. But there is one in Mishawaka. Okay, we should go. We should go. Okay. We were going to look into that more off, off um, podcast. What were we talking about? We were talking about... Oh, Indy Scream houses. Park. Indy <laughs> Scream Park. Yeah. Okay, here's where it is. So there's five of them. They have Pandemic Mutation. Probably not... That's probably not coming back for 2020. Well... Our, okay, are Haunted Houses going to be able to do in 2020? I don't even know. I mean, some probably would. But I don't know. Probably not, actually. There's one called Backwoods, which is probably the scariest one from what I can tell right now. All right, so for what you guys have all been kind of waiting for here, and probably the main meat of this podcast, we're going to design our own. We've heard, we've heard little bits of other people's ideas for a haunted house, but I think we can do a little bit better. So, Indeed. <laughs> I got a genius idea. I don't think you're going to like it, but I got a genius idea. The theme for the entire thing is, like, the stages of adulthood, right? First floor, taxes. Oh, <laughs> that should be the last floor. <laughs> <laughs> so you get, out, you get on the floor, you're in an office, and there's just, there's just tax agents. And they're coming at you, and they're like, sir, have you done your taxes? And then there's, um, what is it? What's that place that Mark hates, the SCC? Yeah. Um, and they're like... <laughs> Elon Musk hates them, too. Yeah. They're, the, so, they're in charge of businesses. After you successfully evade your taxes... I like that. you successfully evade your taxes, you, mo you move on to the next, the next floor. Starting your own business and the <laughs> SEC shutting it down. <laughs> Once you lose the business, you go on to the next where all your friends are getting married and having kids and you're still alone and you're swiping through Tinder trying to hopelessly find something to fill your soul. 
Okay? And then the next one, you find it in the form of a woman. And you have a child with her, but shortly she leaves, takes the child with her, and you're back to square one. <laughs> Fifth floor, final floor. You're confronted with the scariest thing of all. Your, in your imminent death. That's and, where we bring in the zombies. And, get <laughs> <laughs> and guess what? You've lived a life of nothing. Because you're a sack of gar. It's basically just like people pretending to be your parents bar barraging you with insults. <laughs> That's genius. You never amounted to anything. <laughs> This is why your brother's better than you. You're just on the floor, like, crying. <laughs> you go into the VR position, you're like, someone help me. <laughs> it's VR, so, like, this is all <laughs> super immersive. People pay money for this. <laughs> it's like that one game on, um, what was it? It's Rick and Morty, where, I think, it, maybe it's Rick and Morty? I don't know, it's some show, like Rick and Morty where they do this VR game and you get sucked in and basically the you live an entire life in the game and like it's in real like it distorts time so you live this entire person's life and then you when you die you wake up and it's been like 10 minutes that is fascinating that's an awesome concept yeah for our real <laughs> not our adult themed one no one would pay. They they live it every day. <laughs> it's just a reminder that you can't even escape life in a haunted house. I think we do like a like a chainsaw person for the first floor. That's easy. I mean, no one's really scared of a chainsaw person with a rubber chainsaw. But we use real ones. Real chainsaws. Real death. You <laughs> sign a waiver. <laughs> no, we definitely like ours has to be eighteen plus because I want to hold people. And take them places. <laughs> not, nope, not, not like that. Not like that. Listen, when you sign the waiver, you forfeit your right as a human being. <laughs> you sign that away. What You're if like, the whole thing is. Oh, nope, never mind. Nope, come on. Not gonna say it. Listen. I'm gonna censor myself for that one. I, let's talk about not on the pod, yeah. <laughs> um,. But, like, so when you sign our waiver in, at the beginning of this haunted house, I think that that basically just gives us free reign. This is an experience that is the – we want to market this, right, as the best of the best. This is the haunted house that is real. <laughs> the stakes, real. You got to bring your A game. You have to train. We're not really going to kill you, but you might have a few bruises afterward. A few bruises. A few, few bits of <laughs> – <laughs> We're going to have to bleed that out. <laughs> but no, I'm just like, I'm just saying, it's real. I think the, the chainsaw one would work, but like, we had to have like a clone army of them. Because if we just have one, oh, or would that be more intense? Maybe more intense. You're just waiting and you have five floors to get by. What if we do traps? I like that. You got, you see the end. There's your, you get in, here's the door. In front of the door is a man with a chainsaw. Your job, find out how to get in the door. Pitch black. You've got your flashlight, but you can only turn on a bit, little bit. The room, layered with traps. I have For either you, or if you're smart enough, the chainsaw guy. I have a idea that will like double that by like 30. That didn't make any sense. But I just thought it, we get really nice speakers and like someone's in the control room. You're getting a little too far away. You're getting a little too far away from traps. We turn on the speakers to make it sound like a chainsaw. Mm -hmm. And so you turn away from that area straight into a trap. Okay. Okay. I like that. Traps, good idea. Because then like, let's say you do think it's not real. You turn the flashlight, you just wasted your flashlight. It's a mind game more than anything. Yeah. That's what, that would be freaking terrifying. Like, straight yeah. up. So, like, I think what we do is it's definitely a completion thing. You're not paying to get the whole experience. You get the whole experience if you win. Yeah. So, you've got to... Each floor is harder than the last floor. 
And it's like a race, because if you get captured, <laughs> gone, out. So, oh, that's This has turned into, like, a really good idea that, like, you would think, these guys just took a bunch of acid. <laughs> yeah. So, like, there's a bunch of traps on the floor. Your job, get past them. Your obstacle, Chainsaw Man. This we is just give, for the first five this, this, floors. Five floors. So, we need to give Chainsaw Man a weakness. Six floors. Um, because if Chainsaw Man doesn't have a weakness, then how will we pass? How will they pass him, right? Okay. I just thought of something. Since we're doing five, I agree that we need a weakness. But you have groups of five that you go with, right? Oh. Each person has the tool to defeat that level. But they don't know it. Yeah. Oh, dude, this is actually genius. Okay, okay. So... So you've got a chainsaw man. You got you have to go in groups of five. How about this? How about we up the stakes? How about right? It costs a certain amount of money to buy into this. Okay. And we make it challenging, and we say if you manage to beat it, if one person in the group manages to beat it, you get half of the money you put in back. Why don't we? Why don't we be so confident about it? They get it all. They get it all back. So only one has to complete it mm -hmm. for the whole group to get all their money back. Yep. There. There we go. Because this is this is hard. And Most people don't get past You can one. only do it if you win. You only do it once. Yeah. Because if you, you can't do it more than once because then you're just getting, you're just doing it for fun. Right? Yeah. It's like a puzzle. It's like a horror puzzle. This is awesome. This is great ideas. Okay. So we've got the first floor. Yeah. What defeats the chainsaw man? What the chain? Well, okay, so chainsaw. What chainsaws do? Wood. Okay. I don't know where I'm going with this. Cut through wood. Cut through wood. So perhaps. So I mean, there's always the obvious solution: is one member of the group sacrifices themselves to let the others go through. So like, you can run at the chainsaw man and tackle him, and as he's chainsawing your partner, I don't. You guys can get through. But that won't work. Because then, no matter what, one person's going to make it to the last floor. Because you could just sacrifice everyone. Yeah, so that's probably not going to... The Chainsaw Man can take as many or as few people as he wants. Yeah. Because that's how every floor is. Uh-huh. But one person has the key. Let's say you get, like, ten items. Because let's make this really challenging, because we want to keep our money. Yeah. You get ten items, but five work out of the ten. Oh. Five are duds. <laughs> so you not only have to avoid the per like you obviously you can avoid him the whole time yeah which is hard because as soon as you use a flashlight you're screwed yeah so maybe we should do more than one guy what about one per floor one per floor like so maybe we do how about we do like one boss per floor yeah and then a, but it, a, a bunch of, of gremlins yeah so, like, you've got your chainsaw, man. And then he is definitely, like, once you get to that fifth or the sixth floor, because we're doing five parts, once you get to the sixth floor, you meet the boss. Yeah. He's always on the top floor of that level. This one has to be easy, remember? Gosh, I'm thinking hard. I know. This, this is one has a to be long podcast. Yeah, we're at 45 minutes right now. Okay. Let's, let's, let's think. Let's think, let's think. Let's think. Let's think. So... Um, we need a key. We need a key to get him. Maybe this guy, maybe his weakness. Why did he become the chainsaw man? Let's dive into his psyche. There's okay. Clues Ducks. There's... Okay. Let's say that there's clues along that you can find in with each floor. Right? I like that. So you can't, it's not just a guessing game. You can guess and maybe you get it right and maybe you pass, but you've got 10 options and only one works and five don't work on any floor. So you have to find clues to be confident enough to use your key. And so maybe, maybe he became a chainsaw man because of a past tragedy. Right? That has to do with ducks. Okay. I'm really stuck on this duck idea for some reason. <laughs> but I just thought of something that will actually like help. Uh -huh. You have to have, the because th we're wanting to make it the whole thing hard, yeah. not just this level. You have to defeat the boss. Well, yeah, of course. So the boss has the key for you to get into the next group. Dude, yes. This is getting good. Okay. So let's think. The duck thing, right? Okay. What could a 
How, he the... used to have a duck when he was a kid. Okay. His parents murdered it in front of his eyes. With a chainsaw. Yeah. He takes revenge by killing everything. So the key is a rubber duck. A rubber duck. But we want it. Okay, so we want them to get past the first one. Yeah. So let's put like eggs, like spray painted on the stairwell. Um, I let's put that toward the end because okay. we don't want to give it to way to it right away. Maybe we do like subtle clues, like a picture of a boy with a pet duck, like an old picture frame. Smash it. Yeah, smash that. Put blood on it. Yeah, that, and then everyone's like, okay, duck. We've got a duck right yeah. here. We've got a rubber duck. And so what they do is they walk up to the end door and they hold up the duck and the chainsaw man lets them pass. Yeah. But here's the challenging part. Like we said, riddled with traps. So if you land on a trap, you're out. Yeah. You're out of the game. If you get hit by one of the grunts. So let's say for the grunts for the chainsaw man, we have people like crawling on the ground, like with missing body parts. Yeah. And so they're pretty easy to avoid. They're pretty slow and they make a lot of noise. But if you get hit with one of those, out. Yeah. We have to have some light in it, though. It can't be pitch dark. Let's do ha- – let's have – um. so I, I picture, you know, Texas Chainsaw Massacre when I picture Chainsaw Man. Me too. Let's just picture, like, old oil lamps yeah. sporadically put around. Okay, now hear me out on this. As you go along, it gets darker. We – there's always – so I know you said there'd be, like, five floors per. Yeah. I think we I think we change it. I think it's just one floor per challenge. And we have it like three stories or four stories. Well no, we do like so let's do five chal so how many like say, like themes do we want? Three, four I think three or four. I think let's do four. Let's so then we just four. do if we just rent out like a four story warehouse. Yeah. That's which is not hard. Way cheaper too. Yeah. So we do at the end, so when you first get in, you see in light illuminated the chainsaw man at the end sporadically it gets darker towards him and like it's just his silhou- silhouette you can I see i like that and so you see your target before you get in but then you hear little grunts crawling around there's traps everywhere and there's little sporadic oil lamps that allow you to see tiny bits and i'm talking really sporadic but you've got your flashlight yeah and again the flashlight only has 10 minutes but since we're doing let's do let's just say four stories yeah you only have like 12 minutes of light. Yeah. So then you have three minutes per story. Which is about fair. But this, like, the first one's the lightest, then it gets slightly darker. So then, like, the fourth one, the hardest that no one succeeds, pretty much no one succeeds at, it's pitch black. Yeah. But you don't know that. Oh, this is getting so good. Okay, so our second one, I think we do zombies. Okay, zombies. Right? That one's easy. Yeah. We just have zombies roaming around. Let's say, what's the boss for the zombies? Maybe we do old Jebediah. What? You know, Jeb. Oh, Jeb Sr. Jeb Sr., who's corralled the zombies. We could actually, that could be something to do. That would be cool. So it's like a crazy guy who's got like a bunch of zombies as pets. Like attack dogs. Yeah. Michonne from Walking Dead had them on chains, but they, they were good. Yeah. But I think I think like an attack dog type zombie army. Yeah, like hellhounds in Call of Duty. Yeah, but like a little bit slower because if we just release hellhounds, everyone would get. And we still have traps on this one, of course. There's traps on every floor. What would be the key? So the key to doing this one would be. Oh, the key is secure, but all you have is a beaker. What if you, you... have to find the materials? around the floor to make the cure how do you find that is the clues we leave around okay now hear me out on this yeah there's clues but there's also fake ingredients that if you put in you fail so how how about this right the second floor is kind of a, a nuanced take on the zombie apocalypse you've got you start in a like a a dark wooded area right so it's just like normal zombies. But you can see in the, you know how in the first part you saw at the end the man with the chainsaw, you see a laboratory. And in that laboratory, here's your, here's the guy. I take it back. No one's corralling the zombies. The zombies are just rampant. But to pass, there's a scientist who's barricaded himself in there. And you have to help him get the cure. Yeah. And so, but he can't, like you can't talk to him, yeah. obviously. 
but like there's different things like you can find papers like notes that have been left out around that have like different ingredients on it and there's like say we have a note with all the possible ingredients and there's like code that allows you to figure out which ingredients are right then when you figure out all that you have to find the ingredients okay and the things that you get at the beginning you can have two keys yeah but only one works to get into cm so if you're like being chased by a horde and you only have time to try one key yeah and you fail you're toast so i think what we do right it's zombies so there's got to be a way we're in a warehouse we're not in the middle of the woods yeah. so you can't run forever right so maybe one person so maybe each member of the five has a role you get your 10 tools so let's let's take let's think for a second instead of everyone getting two items maybe one person is designated as the item guy yeah and their job is to have all 10 items in a backpack that's his role you've got one role who is the fighter and only he's only available to actually do his role at like certain floors it's like the zombie apocalypse one maybe you have or maybe he's allowed to do it on all floors, but he can't use it on a boss. And it's like he's got a like a paintball gun with five shots. I like that. And so maybe as the zombie floor, you know, it starts off, there's only a couple zombies. But the longer you take to find the cure and to get in, there's the more. more zombies come out. Yeah. I like that. I like that a lot. And so eventually you'd be able to get in the house make the cure, and progress to level three. But you can't just waste all your paintballs, because what if you need them later? And you cannot use your paintballs on a boss. Like, if you, you can't just shoot the, the chainsaw guy and then leave. Yeah. They can only be used on grunts. I like that. I like that. Okay, our third story. What are you thinking? So we've got Chainsaw Man. Zombies. Zombies. What's what's a step up from that? Hmm. What's scarier than a horde of just slow moving zombies? Chase your mind. F okay, what if it's just like murder? Yeah, I mean that could work easily. Okay, what if you have like the purge? Siren? What if it's a cult? Okay, now we're getting somewhere. What if it's cult? What if you get? I think we should save that one for the last one. Oh yeah. Let's save that for the last. The third one, I think we should have like a like a purge type scenario. Oh, that's cool. And then like the rrr, rrr, things going off the whole time. Maybe it's a random chimp event. No. Okay. <laughs> no random chimp events. That'd be too hard. Just a bunch of monkeys. The key is a banana. That'd be too easy. Um. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know what you'd do for the key on this one. But I think having like... Just like a bunch of people trying to stab you would be cool. Yeah. We just, maybe it's set in like an urban street area kind of set that we'll do. Yeah. And there's like fires and buildings and then people coming out and like purge kind of attire. There's what if we did it? Siren. What if we did it like in a house and you had to like, we built up like drywall walls and you have to like navigate your way through the house. And, like, all around you, there are people. Mm -hmm. But you can open and close doors. And if you close the door, they can't get in. Oh. I like that. Because that way you can kind of outrun them. Yeah. You could, like, close people off. Yeah. Oh, that's kind of dope. Okay. And then they can't go after you until you enter a room. Okay. Okay. So you, you if, once you figure out one room and you figure out the doors to close... You're kind of safe, and you can gather, gather your breath and then go into the next one. Yeah. Okay. And there's not, like, a person per room, but, like, it's it's like a maze. Oh, yes. And then, like, the only lights are, like, night lights in the corner uh -huh. that can illuminate part of the clue. Okay. So what's our clue? I don't know. Okay. So what's our boss? I don't know. Um, Boss would be... I've never even watched The Purge. They're so. really good. We should watch them. We should watch them. That should be a podcast. Okay. So there's this scene in Purge Anarchy, I think. Or Purge. 
election year, maybe. I don't know. One of them, there's a guillotine involved. Okay. I think I think you have to you have to stop the guy. He's getting ready to guillotine someone. Oh, so there's some timing to this too. Yeah. Okay. Okay. And to stop him, you have to find like a certain something that you can take him out from long distance. Like a drone or something. Oh, okay. So that's that's pretty like standard four. Yeah. But um, it's like the maze part's the hard part. Yeah. So it gets a lot harder and a lot scarier. This doesn't sound as scary as the other ones just because of how the limited amount of describing, but being stuck in a maze and not knowing which room will get you to an enemy yeah, would you, be a slow burn horror. Imagine like just rooms, like everything's a square, uh huh. but like having four entries from each. Yeah. So it's like the back rooms. I don't Have know you that heard is. that? It's like um the pe- what some people think like you'll go to when you die, and it it's like um just endless amounts of rooms and hallways connected to rooms, and it's just you it feels unending. Yeah, that's what it would be like. Yeah, that is super scary. Because like okay, I shouldn't say each one has four doors, but like there's a lot of them, uh-huh. and the way to get out is to like find the path, but there's only one path. Yeah. Even though you can go to like multiple areas, but there's like dead ends and stuff. Oh my god, dude, that is that's great. scary. That's super scary, especially with enemies and no light or like barely any light. Yeah, and not knowing what to do. And also, you've got to imagine the psychological horror of how you're completing this, right? No one's made. I've decided that pretty much no one's gonna be able to make it past that level. Yeah, that's hard. You have to be like really smart. You have to be really smart. Plus, you have to keep your wits about you. Yeah, because you just witnessed. The first level, which was pretty easy in comparison, but then the zombie level, you're getting swarmed with, like, hordes of zombies trying to figure out a, a scientific cure to present the past. Like, you're so exhausted, but you're, like, high adrenaline, you yeah, know, you at have that to... point. And so then you get into slow burn. You instantly transition from getting attacked from every angle to not knowing where to go and just hearing eerie, spooky noises and silence. I like that a lot. The psychological that you're feeling at that point is, oh, crap. That would be the best floor. Yeah. Except for the cult floor. Yeah. So eventually, right, you save the guy with your drone strike or whatever, and you pass forward. And it's the cult. Oh, this is going to be a good freaking floor. This is the hardest floor out of all of them in the past me, right? And so if anyone, by the way, at least three members of the group has perished by this point. Oh, yeah. Because you can't, if you get a group of five to this, you guys are gods. You've won. Yeah. Well, I don't know if you've won. But, like, really, because, okay, you're going to have to, like, honestly, someone's probably going to die once per floor. Yeah. I'd say on the purge floor, we institute that waiver we talked about at the beginning where people can be grabbed and kidnapped. So, like, maybe your group, one person comes up from behind, takes one, and drags them away. What if only, like, a few people can kill you throughout the whole thing? Uh-huh. You just have to avoid them. Yeah. But they're, like, clearly marked. Okay. So, like, the boss could kill you. All the bosses can kill you. Yeah. And kill multiple people. But, like, only, like, two or three grunts per, like, stage can kill you well i think all the zombies should be able to kill you. i well then we had to have safe zones so you can gather your thoughts to make the cure yeah i don't know how we do that but we'd figure it out well i mean there's some logistical issues of course but i mean this is bare bones idea yeah i don't know the cult one i think everyone has the the purge thing i don't think everyone should be able to kill you like only two or three yeah but they can take you into the other rooms. Yeah. And so you can abandon your group. Oh, so, yeah, no. So the purge, maybe only the two or three can kill you. But if you, you want to be... go on without your group, you can do it. Oh, my gosh. So, like, no one dies, but people are taken to other parts of the maze. And then they're trying to figure out how to get to back to their group. And maybe they don't figure it out. And maybe they run into the one or two that kills them. Yeah. And maybe one person or two people if they manage to stay together in a group. Yeah. Can make it to the cult. I like that. And then they make it to the cult. 
and I would say the cold. We we got to start with a setting, right? I'd say woods, Utah. Okay. Mormons. Mormons. <laughs> Cancel. <laughs> <laughs> um, I say woods. I like the woods. I'd say you can't talking, go wrong with the woods. Not for cults, you can't. No. And so you see a fire. I think we said. Oh, now hear me. Yeah, there's definitely a fire for you to start. Yeah. Or like someone. Okay, so I think this brings up a good point. There should be a starting point where people tell you the story. Yeah. Of why you're here. What about for the starting point of the cult? Hear me out here. How about this? How about no one knows how many floors they have to get through before the haunted house? And they get to the start of the cult and they're presented with an option. A member of the cult comes out and says, Congratulations, you've won. Follow me. And you say, Oh, you, you can say, accept or not. And you, yeah, like, you can say, Um, I don't think so. I'm going to go this way. And that's when you actually start the challenge. But you can also say, Oh, really? And you go with him. And, and then lose. they sacrifice yeah, you. Yeah, but not, not really. Not really. But at that <laughs> point, like, you lose. You get dragged into a room, and then they are doing like a chant over you, you know? Yeah. And you're done. I like that a because lot. Because most people are going to say, oh, yes, I won. And yeah. You lose. But like the guy looks like a normal guy. Yeah. And he's, but maybe he's talking. How about this? How about people, just to make it fair and possible, throughout the other flues, or uh, throughout <laughs> the other floors, there are clues that are preparing you for it if you pay attention. So they talk about the cult and how the cult promises fake victory. And so you can just shrug that off as, oh, it's haunted house things, and you don't even think about it when you get there. But if you do think about it, so you're presented with the choice. You can go with them, which is what most people do because they're idiots, and then they die, and then they lose. Or you can say, no, thank you, and then the cult gets angry. And then, then that's where the challenge begins. Yeah. What if we spray, spray paint, like, fake victory on each floor? Fake victory. Don't go with them. Yeah. Fake victory on one. Don't, don't go believe with him. Yeah. On the three before. Yeah. And so when you see those, you, like, don't really know what it means, but then it'll make sense. If you think about it. If you're collecting your thoughts. Yeah. Oh, that's good. I like that. And this is like a jacked up escape room. Yeah, this is just escape room on steroids. It's horror escape room. Let's call it the Gauntlet. Okay, I like that name. Yeah, and then and then the the cult thing. Uh huh. I don't know what what. I think it should be like we set up sprinklers so it's like rain. Yeah. So maybe th- you say if you say no, then the guy looks at you. And it's like, your choice. And, and then oh, walks and then away. Backwards. Yeah. And then you hear a thunderclap, and the lights flicker. And then it starts raining. And then raining. it starts raining. And then you see a fire up ahead. And you're like, well, that's my, that's my ticket. So you start walking towards the fire, because it's the light. As you get closer, and more things start to light up, you start seeing a little bit of creepy meathness around it. And then you, um, oh... Everyone can kill you on the cult floor. Everyone can kill you. So maybe you hit the fire and there's some worshippers worshiping. And then they're like, as soon as they see you, they just turn around instantly at, at one and start going towards you. And obviously, of course, as in every floor, traps everywhere. You get off the trail, you're screwed. You're screwed. You stay on the trail, you're screwed. Yeah. You have to make a choice. You have to say, if you're smart and you saved your flashlight, You'd then be you able can to... use them on the more trap-infested, off-the-beaten-path areas and lose the cult. But if you're stupid and you've already used your flashlight... The cults can't go off the trail. Oh, that's a move. So this whole time, we don't tell but them... You don't, they don't know that. The flashlight's gonna die, Yeah, but they don't know that. I think we should tell them the fla- We should hint that the flashlight might die, because if they... If it doesn't die, then everyone's just going to use it on the front floor. Of what if we say, like, save your energy? Yeah, just be like, just when you give it to him, you're like, never know when this is going to run out. Have yeah. fun. Oh, yeah. This yeah. is going to be, this is an unbelievable plan. Yeah. and then, Someone send us money so we can put this together. 
this might be our most productive podcast ever. Yeah. Like, logic-wise. What's the key to beat the cult leader? The key to beat the cult leader? Hmm. I don't know. Uh, tax evasion. Tax evasion. Tax evasion papers. No. Um, I would say we can just, I mean, it can be pretty, like, basic almost. I mean, you can just, so we've got the, we've got the duck. We've yeah. got the cure. We've got the drone strike. And then for the cult leader, we just, maybe, ooh, maybe. Of you can get to a phone and call for help. And once you call, that signals the escape room over. What if it was a walkie-talkie then? Oh, okay, that's better. And like the only way you the way you get like in range, mm-hmm. we stay like we have someone the perfect distance away. Yeah. So the minute they get close enough, like we have a clue that says like call. turn it on to hear the voice or whatever. Yeah. And then the minute they get close enough, they turn on the walkie-talkie and signal for help. Yeah, and then they get they then they get off. Yeah, and then they win. Yeah, and then they get their money back. But yeah. no one's gonna do it. It's gonna be so hard. It'll be impossible. We're at an hour and eight minutes. Well, we're gonna cut some of the middle bit out. Yeah, but this I, this haunted house plan is our best plan so far. This might be like our magnum opus. Yeah. of ideas. We have a lot of stupid ideas, but this one actually kind of good. This is really good. If we had a lot of money, we could really go somewhere. I feel like we could make money. Too. This is, You could have this all year round. Oh, for sure, because it doesn't have to just be Halloween. Let's put it somewhere like in a vacation spot and have it as, like, advertise it as a... What if we put it in, like, a spring... Bla- spring? Eh, no, that'd just be drunk people. You could put it in, like, um Orlando, Florida, mm-hmm. or, like, California, L.A. L.A. might be the perfect place. For L.A. Us. would be the perfect place. Lots of millennials. Yeah. Describe it as the most challenging escape room haunted house mix. I don't know what you'd call it. It's like the it's a blend of an escape room plus horror plus I don't know. It's super interactive. It's the best plan I've ever made. It is. And with that, my friends, I hope you guys enjoyed. This was one of my favorite podcasts we've ever done. It yeah. doesn't feel like we've sat here for an hour. Because time flew when we're making this idea. Yeah. Um, if you enjoyed this, leave it a like or rate us five stars on Apple Podcasts. If you want more material like this, let us know. And ask us some questions. We'll be happy to answer them. Yeah. This is an all-time plan. This is an all-time plan. If you're watching and maybe you have an absurd amount of money that you want to invest in us, go ahead. We're not going to stop you. If you're a if you're a horror park thing and you want to send us free tickets, please do. We'll review it on podcast for our entire huge audience of 50 subscribers on YouTube. That yeah. being said, if you're not a subscriber on YouTube, what the f- are you doing? <laughs> it's so easy. Hit that red button. Did you just sit here and listen to all of this not to subscribe? Do it. Subscribe. Check out our link tree where we have links to everything. Yeah. And yeah, so rate us five stars. Subscribe on YouTube. Like us on Instagram. Follow us on Twitter. And we will see you guys in the next episode of Chats. Goodbye. Goodbye.